Sweeper keepers are sweeping the world of football. Playing from the back, keeper acting as a defender, keeper in the midfield. We have seen it all in football. However, keepers such as Onana and Neuer are relatively new to the game. But the idea isn't. This idea is very old. And in the olden days, Georgi Campos was the Picasso sweeper keeper. Who is Campos? Well, A to Z Football is here to tell you guys about the lad who introduced modern keeping to the world. Not only this, but he was so good, so acrobatic, he used to play as a striker as well. He revolutionized football, and this is not even the most intriguing part about him. He actually made FIFA change its rules. What? Yes, the dude was very influential. Hmm, I see a few of you getting agitated already to know who he was. Hold on, stay easy, we're going to tell you everything about him. So, let's begin. As you guys know, Mexicans have a history of furnishing legendary goalkeepers. We have seen extraordinary displays between the poles from anyone who carries that Mexican crest and Campos was a similar dude. An eccentric player known for his constant play outside the penalty area, his acrobatic, risky and flamboyant style of goalkeeping along with his colourful playing attire became a Campos trademark, <laughs> with him fulfilling his role of a sweeper keeper to perfection. Born in Acapulco, he started his career in 1988 in Mexico when Pumas saw a wonder kid behind the guy who was just 5 foot 6. At that time, the club's first string goalkeeper was Adolfo Rios, so first team action was looking like a far dream. But his desire coupled with his ability to play higher up the field allowed him to play as a striker. And it wasn't just a part-time gig. The dude became a hit. He scored 14 goals while contending for the title of top goalscorer and in the following season he earned the position of first choice goalkeeper as well, winning the 1990-91 to 91 championship with Pumas. He then went on to break another record as he won the Mexican Primera Division Golden Glove for five consecutive seasons. Jeez, winning a thing you don't even like. This is the perfect anticlimax for a movie, or is it? because the real anticlimax is waiting for you guys. But before that, let's peep a bit more into his life. With time, his influence as a player was growing, with pundits starting to regard him as one of the finest of his generation, and his strengths were unquestionably apparent. His leaping ability, athleticism, and speed when rushing off his line, as well as his ability to organize his defense, enabled him to overcome his short stature and play the role of a sweeping keeper with finesse. These abilities helped him win big, with him winning the Primera División de Mexico Inverno in 1997 with Cruz Azul. Although he was becoming the second string goalkeeper to Oscar Perez at that time, his proficiency with the ball was highlighted as he often played the role of a substitute striker. Pumas and Cruz Azul weren't the only clubs he left his mark on, and played for clubs such as Atlante, Tigres and Puebla as well as scoring 35 goals during his career. Perhaps his most notable highlight came when he scored a bicycle kick goal for Atlante in the 1997 season. That game was a movie itself. He started as a goalkeeper, but as the forwards were failing to score a goal, the coach replaced a field player with another goalkeeper to send Campos to the attack. What happened next is history. He scored a worldie, a sitter, and he wasn't done just yet. Meanwhile, he also took his talents overseas at this time as he became the first major star to be signed by Major League Soccer when he was acquired by the Los Angeles Galaxy, playing there for three seasons before moving to the Chicago Fire. He was the first major foreign star to be signed by the league and enjoyed considerable popularity in the United States. We all know that the USA is a place where talent is respected. If you are talented, this is one place where you will get a fair return for it. And he was getting it. It was a proud moment for a Mexican to respect his country in a foreign league like this. And with his unique dual set of play, he was the MVP of the league, featuring in the all-star team on every season of his stay. Wow, he was rocking the league. And on June 16, 1996, 
he added another distinctive feat to his impressive list of accomplishments when he played in back-to-back -back matches during a double-header event at the Rose Bowl, playing for Mexico against the United States, and then the Galaxy against Tampa Bay. Oh my word, this dude is amazing. And with amazing sportsmanship comes amazing endorsements. He was already so popular, so this was a matter of time. But in the 1990s, the dude was perhaps the most famous player to hold the ball. And his unique sports kit meant that once you see him, you will never forget him. So Nike took advantage, casting him as a lead in a number of commercials while other brands soon followed the feat. He was an icon now while already being a star at club level as well as having an international career overflowing with dynamism. The 1993 IFFHS World Best Goalkeeper accumulated 129 caps playing for the Tricolours. He also represented them in the World Cups of 1994 and 1998, while being on the bench for the 2002 edition. One thing that usually surrounds a player who is of his caliber is controversies, and he was no different. But there was one major divergence. The controversy wasn't because of something he did or because of any contraband measure, but because of the fact the guy was so talented. Can you guys believe it? We are not bluffing. It actually happened. He actually got banned because he was so good. You see, teams started to protest how him being a substitute attacker gave Mexico an unfair advantage as they had an extra man in their squad. After many complaints, FIFA eventually disallowed the possibility of a goalkeeper to also be registered as a striker in the same match. They literally took the essence of his game, banning something that most of the audience found very fascinating. Ha! I told you, this was very weird, even for the standards that FIFA have set. I mean, we all know they ban everything, and they like playing with people, but why can't a goalkeeper play up front? We've seen them lead their lines, and they even come in the opposing halves. But God forbid if someone wants to score some goals. This is absurd. This didn't dent his popularity though, as he was still well established in the public eye. Subsequently, he was invited several times to play with the rest of the world team against clubs like Real Madrid, Barcelona and Milan, while also getting selected as one of three overage players on the Mexico Olympic team at the 1996 Summer Olympics. Talent talks, and when you're this good, everyone wants a slice of your greatness. Such was the aura of Jorge Campos, a living legend a guy who had a perpetual effect on goalkeeper roles and their position on the field. He truly was one of the all-time greats. And there you have it, A to Z family. I hope you enjoyed diving into the history with me today. If you found this video entertaining, give it a thumbs up. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss out on our future adventures. Adios.